The saga of OP, who married at 18, finally realizing she is being abused and divorcing her toxic husband, taking Redditor's advice. Throwaway account due to friends' family following main account. Omitting some personal information for sake of anonymity. I'm going to try and make a timeline of events in our relationship for context. TLDR at bottom. Met when we were nine, started dating at 12 mind you. This was that middle school type of dating. He cheated on me when we were 15 or 16. At this point, we were on again, off again, which continued until we were 17. I got a full ride to a university across the country for athletics academics when I was 18. My first and only semester there, I hated. I hated the team and the coaches, and I had no friends. He flew out to visit me, and we got engaged at 18 years old. He flew back a little over a month later, and we had a courthouse wedding. I came home after the semester finished. He was 18, and I was 19 when he joined a very difficult prestigious branch of the military. He left for three months for training, which was difficult, but we did fine. He came back for a few weeks, and then left for a few more months for school for his particular job. During this time I would later find out. He signed himself up on Bumble and paid 50 plus dollars in upgrades for more swipes. He insists he never met anyone from it and no conversations that he had were ever anything more than introductions. He also again, I would later find out a few years later spent over $600 at a strip club. He says he was pressured by seniors to go and ended up paying for a VIP room for one of his buddies because he got the room and then didn't have the money to pay for it. And my husband said his friend was going to get into trouble. That weekend, he would go up and down the coast going to various clubs and another strip club, from what I've gathered. At 19, we moved states and got our first house together. At 20, he deployed. This would be a very difficult time in our lives, and even more difficult after he got home. He developed an adultery addiction while deployed. I remember sitting on the bathroom floor at 4 in the morning refreshing one of his social media accounts, and I could see his following numbers go up about every 5 minutes. All adult accounts, he pressured me for pictures and videos, and I would feel guilty for not doing the things he wanted, and I felt like if I didn't, he was just going to find someone else to do it for him. He came home six months later, and we were okay. Except I noticed after a few weeks that as soon as he came home from work, he would practically beeline it to the bathroom and shower for 45 plus minutes. Sometimes I would even go into the bathroom after, and I could tell he dropped the bottle of lube on the ground, and it was still slippery. Or I could see the ring on the counter from the bottom of the bottle. I did my best to ignore it, until one day, I saw a charge on our account for $30 to someone with a very interesting name. I confronted him, and he immediately looked away, took in a deep breath, brushed his hand through his hair, and sputtered out a quick excuse that it was his buddy's wife who bought them all lunch during work. I don't know why, but I said okay and left it at that. He got up a few minutes later, saying he felt sick, and went to lay down. I got a text from him an hour later saying he was sorry, and that he developed adultery addiction over deployment, and he sent money to a girl for her premium Snapchat or something. He says he felt so guilty he didn't even look at anything, and he deleted her right after he sent the money. I realized that the day this transaction took place, he had bought me flowers. He has never done that before, not even on any special occasions. From here on, the dates get confusing for me. I don't remember what happened first or when or how far apart, but I'll do my best to include as much information as I remember. Sometime later. Maybe weeks, maybe months. I woke up to a message from an old acquaintance on a certain social media. I think we were still 20 or maybe 21. I don't remember what exactly she said something along the lines of, I just wanted you to know XXXX said this to me, or something like that. He had messaged her the night prior, whilst drinking at a friend's house down the road, that he loved and missed her. I wish so badly I could remember more, but for some reason I can't. I know she said something like, You can't be saying this, you're married. And he said something along the lines of, I don't care. I screamed at him to wake up, but he was still drunk. I told him I wanted a divorce. I locked myself in the bathroom and hurt myself because I wanted to feel anything other than how I felt at that moment. I don't know how much time passed. When he opened the door, he said he didn't send those messages. He said that he left his phone plugged into the speaker and his friend was using it to play music. He said his friend must have seen the girl's story and messaged her, trying to get naked footage. He even pulled out his phone with proof, a text conversation between him and his friend confirming that the friend had messaged her, and said he was sorry. I don't know why, but I believed him immediately. I remember having the most euphoric feeling of. I don't know what the word is, 
But whatever you feel when you let out a breath you've been holding and say, Oh, thank God. I'm getting frustrated writing this, because I'm realizing how much I'm forgetting, and I feel like I'm missing something. At 21, I think, SHT hit the fan. I think at this point I had gone through his phone several times, and found internet history and links that he had clicked through one of his social media accounts to hundreds of different OnlyFans sites. One night I went through his entire account history since 2018, and found the charge for the strip club and Bumble. He said the Bumble charge wasn't him. It was a senior who used his card because his had gotten frozen or something ridiculous like that. I of course believed him. I don't know why. I can't remember at what point I found out that he lied about messaging the girl on social media. I think it was after I had looked through his phone again, and I found text messages between him and his friend that was the one who allegedly sent the messages. His friend said something like, Bro, I can't even go to parties that your wife is at because she hates me, lol, or something like that. But they both confirmed what I didn't want to believe. My husband had taken my phone, deleted the messages sent to me by the girl, and got his friend in on this elaborate story. I can't remember when I found out that he did in fact download and pay for upgrades on Bumble. I think I just knew at this point he was lying, and grilled him long enough that he relented. He said he never met anyone or anything, and he said during the conversation, I only paid for the upgrade because no one would ever swipe for me. Or something like that. I can't remember at what point we went to legal on base and got information to file for divorce. I'd never seen him cry before, besides one other time. After we got married, at the airport, he cried so hard, and he wouldn't let me see. He just hugged me and buried my face in his chest, so I wouldn't see. He said he didn't want to leave. But he cried constantly after I told him this was it, and that I had an appointment and paperwork filled out to file for divorce. I'd never seen him like this before, constantly saying he was sorry deleting every social media account he'd ever owned, crying at the drop of a pin, saying things like he will never marry again. I could have everything in our savings. He'd pay for me to finish college, if that's what I wanted. I relented, and we went to marriage counseling. He stepped up a lot. He was never on his phone anymore. Would keep his phone unlocked and face up on the table. She told me I could go through it any time I asked. Promised to stop watching adultery. He even started cleaning the house and making dinner before I got home from work. He stopped drinking with his friends. It was a complete 180. For a while, the issues started to arise when every little thing would trigger a panic attack. He couldn't hang out with his friends without me freaking out. He began drinking with his friends again, maybe a few weeks later. One night he wasn't home by the time he told me he would be, and I just broke. I ended up in the hospital, and it was just the start of this toxic cycle. He would do something that would trigger me, whether it be drinking with his friends or the occasional YouTube short. I would see in his watch history of a half-naked woman with her tits out and bouncing up and down. I would scream at him and berate him and degrade him because I wanted him to feel exactly how I felt. I think marriage counseling eventually helped a lot. After the hospital, I finally got my own therapist. She was my best friend. I still text her to this day. I didn't have any friends where we lived. He worked with his friends every day and every weekend they would all party. I didn't have anyone. My friends and family were back home. I'm shy and have really bad social anxiety, and have always had trouble making friends, because I can't seem to ever open my mouth when there's more than three people in the room. Whenever he would leave to go anywhere, I felt so alone. I think at 22, our marriage really started improving again. We went on vacation together, and were able to work through a lot of issues, and we were able to communicate things we were feeling, and it was amazing. We both felt so heard, and were able to find happy mediums on issues and relay boundaries that each of us respected. I was 23 when I moved home a few months before his contract ended. He tied up his loose ends on the house and work, and he moved back home with me. He tried working a night shift blue-collar job, making good money, even more than he made in the military. But he hated it. He hated everything about it. He missed his friends and his job. His friends were his family. This was the first time I'd ever seen him truly depressed. Five months later, he joined a different branch of the military. I didn't want him to. I wanted him to stay and have a normal life with me. I wanted to work normal jobs and have a family. He doesn't. He said he doesn't even want a family. I had started nursing school, and my best friend, whom I hardly ever got to see, had a baby. I finally had a group of friends and family I was able to hang out with every week. He left and got stationed in a different state but only about 600 miles away this time. Far but drivable. He came home for a visit after only a week of being there. We were doing good at this point. 
texting and calling a lot. A little over a month ago, he left to go across the country for a six-week exercise in the desert. He didn't have his phone for most of it, but he was able to text me once over a week ago. He didn't text again after that, until I messaged him, letting him know that a pet of mine had died. He replied immediately. I've realized that he has had his phone, but just hasn't been talking to me. Yesterday, he texted me in the morning, letting me know that he was going to spend an upcoming holiday with an old military friend from his previous branch. And then the holiday after that he wanted to go see his extended family in a different state. We've talked a lot since then, not about anything good. I've asked why he's pushing me away, and he said he's focusing on his goals. I said I felt like I was being put on the back burner until he was ready to acknowledge me and our marriage, and I tried to tell him he didn't have to be alone and that I would support him. He said, you can't, though. You say you can, but you didn't support college or the CIA, so I kind of felt I should just do this alone and get rid of some of the negativity. And I realized he was right. He brought up college when we were about 21, maybe 22, and I actually scoffed at him because I didn't realize he was being serious. I didn't believe he could do something like that. He barely graduated high school. He went to four different high schools total, never getting above a 1.5 GPA. I tried doing his homework to keep him afloat, but he didn't care. I even got him enrolled in the same online academy that I attended due to public school, not fitting around my athletic schedule. And I had to do every class and every assignment for him because he would never do them. He ended up graduating from what you would call an alternative high school. After telling me he wanted to go to college, he then told me he was going to join the CIA. This was just unfathomable to me. I didn't know what to do because he wanted my support. But I also didn't want to lie to him and tell him I believed in him. I guess I still don't. And I feel awful. And I can't imagine the feeling of your spouse not supporting you unconditionally. I don't know how to support him in something I just don't think he can do. And now we're here. Neither of us want a divorce. Both of us know our relationship hasn't been the best. We both don't know what to do. I would feel so lost and empty without him. I've known him for more than half of my life. Our personalities are formed around each other. We talk the same. We have the same mannerisms. We experienced growing up together and becoming adults together. I just want to add that these experiences I've listed were the worst times. We've had amazing experiences together. We have so much effing fun together. He makes me laugh more than anyone else can. He knows everything about me and has been there for every important moment in my life. I'm absolutely terrified of the future. I'm scared to tell my family if we get a divorce. I don't want to be another statistic. I know we got married young. I know we are a military family. I know that. I know that most of these marriages ended in divorce. But I really effing thought we were different. I don't want to start over. I'm almost 24. And I know that's still considered young. But I've known him for 14 years. I thought we would have started thinking about having a family together by now. He just wants to focus on his career. And says he doesn't think he even wants a family. I don't know what to do anymore. If you're still here, thanks for reading. I apologize if I'm all over the place. I haven't ever shared all this with anyone. I'm embarrassed about my situation and feel at a loss for what to do anymore. I'm really nervous to read any replies because I think I know what they're all going to say. TLDR married young. He's in the military. History of infidelity on his part. Verbal abuse on my part. And lack of support. Have had successful marriage counseling in the past. But we're at the point where we feel like we want different things. But both of us still love each other and don't want a divorce. Neither of us know what to do. Update in the comments. After over a thousand people castigating me in the comments section, I wanted to sort of give an update and answer a few questions. First off, yes, I can in fact, type like a mother effer. I had every intention of creating this post with anonymity, which obviously went down the drain as soon as I started typing. I didn't think this would get more than a couple thousand views and a handful of comments. I typed out every ignominious detail, because I needed to see for myself everything in one spot. Someone said it must be exhausting to be around, if I tell my friends and family all this. Well, you'll be happy to know that no, no one knows. I have never told any of my friends and family, even a percentage of what has happened. That's why I ended up writing an epic. I wanted someone to know everything, and tell me what to do because my brain has become this convoluted the rose-colored type of convoluted mess of. I don't even know. I have made my husband out to be this strong, Loving, endearing, charismatic provider. And I know why. I've spent my entire life wanting to be the effing best at everything. My dad's favorite thing he used to say to me every day after practice was, second place is just the first loser. And I effing held on to that. 
I was the best. I was the best at school. I ranked one out of my high school class of over 700 people. I have hundreds of medals and trophies. I did take second place at nationals one year. Even though that doesn't feel like an accomplishment to me, I know it should be. But after dropping out of college and leaving behind a full-ride athletic and academic scholarship, I wanted it to be worth something. I never told anyone I left because I hated it and couldn't deal with it. I told everyone I got married and he joined the Marine Corps and I wanted to support him. I didn't want anyone to realize that I couldn't hack it. I wanted it to be worth it. And if I had marriage problems or if I got divorced, it would have been for nothing. I would have lost again. And I can't lose. I grew up hiding in my closet, hearing my dad scream at the top of his lungs at my older siblings because they averaged C's and D's in school. I knew what losing would get you. And I would not lose. My mom cheated on my dad when I was a kid. I remember waking up one morning to them screaming on the front lawn. My mom was trying to get into her car to go to work. And my dad grabbed her arm and ripped her out of the car. They don't know that I saw that. They worked through it, if that's what you want to call it. I thought that was what you were supposed to do. I thought that marriage was supposed to be hard. And you were supposed to put every ounce of yourself into fixing your ups and downs. Many have asked if I want to live the rest of my life like this. Of course I don't. Who the F would want that? Why did I stay even after the first time? Well, starving people will eat anything. I have actually read every single comment, even the hurtful ones. God damn you guys are effing arseholes, and I needed it. I freaking needed over a thousand people telling me I'm a blind idiot to realize that marriage isn't supposed to be like this, and that I deserve better. Because I effing do. I do effing deserve better. And for all those saying I'm not going to leave because I haven't yet, I will effing prove you wrong. I'm not going back anymore. I'm not going to effing settle. I had heard the phrase, sunk cost fallacy, but I didn't know what it meant. I do now. Thank you to everyone, even the ones who believe this post was a creative writing assignment. It gave me a laugh realizing that my life and my marriage have been so bad that it's unbelievable. Last side note. Yes, I did comment with my main account a few times. It doesn't even matter anymore. And feel free to shoot me a message and tell me I got this. Because I'm going to effing need it. I feel like I've been rug pulled near the edge of a cliff. And I can't find my footing. I don't know where the ground is or when it will come. But I know wherever I land it will be better than where I am currently. Update. One year later. Hi everyone. It's been almost a year. I can't believe it's been almost an entire year. I don't think I've ever made an update like this before. So hopefully I do it right and it's not removed. I meant to update sooner. I really did. But I have been busy living my life to the fullest extent possible. I can honestly say I didn't even think it was possible to enjoy life this much. I have never experienced happiness like this. I'm honestly having a hard time putting it into words how amazing my life has become. I filed for divorce probably within 48 hours of making that post. Papers were signed a month later, and divorce was finalized two months after that. It was completely uncontested, we shared no assets, no children thank God. It was actually a lot easier than I expected it to be. Honestly, the hardest part was telling my family, especially my mom. Everyone loved him so much because I, unfortunately, made him out to be so perfect. It was pretty much a slap in the face for her to find out. I felt awful. She cried for days. But she was so supportive of me. Everyone was so damn supportive of me. I turned 25 soon. I decided to get my nurse practitioner's license. So that's the track I'm on right now. I've made an incredible amount of friends this year. If I'm not working, I'm out having fun. I'm always doing something fun every day. I'll try to reply to any comments. But you know, I'm so busy these days. I have truly begun to find myself. And I'm effing awesome. I am capable of so much. And I am brave. I am so brave. I did make one special friend from my original post. Bethany 2003s and thanks to you and my best friend Katie. If you guys are reading this, thank you for keeping me accountable and loving me unconditionally. I really didn't realize what a horrendous situation I was in at least. Not until after I made that initial post and received so many eye-opening comments. A lot of people were right though. I did already know the answer to my question. It's actually kind of weird thinking about it. It doesn't even feel real. Whenever I try to think about my life over the last couple of years, I can hardly remember anything. It's almost like I'm trying to recall a story that someone else told me. Anything that I do remember, I recall almost like I was a spectator or an invisible third person in the room. And I just think, this poor girl, and what she's going through I can't even imagine how awful. It just doesn't even feel like it was me.
My real life started as soon as he was gone. We don't speak anymore. We haven't really spoken much since December. One of the last interactions we had. He was upset about the divorce and regretted it. And then he proceeded to threaten that he would murder anybody that I dated in the future. Yes, it's documented to the best of my ability. I don't think he would ever actually do anything like that. He hasn't even been back in the state this year. I think he's too busy. Last I heard through the grapevine, he got drunk, had a one-night stand, and got some girl pregnant. She wants to keep the baby. He doesn't. I think she even took a brick to his car and smashed the SHT out of it. If I could give him one last piece of advice, it would be to start a savings account for this poor kid's future therapy bills. And to ask him if he ever realized that almost all of his monumental life mistakes have been committed under the influence of alcohol. But alas, it isn't my problem. He will never hear from me again. And I can say that with complete happiness and confidence. To everyone who said I wouldn't do it, and that I wasn't capable of leaving. F you and thank you. I did. I did leave. I didn't walk. I ran. I freaking sprinted. And I didn't look back. Thank you, Reddit, for helping me save my life. To anyone who may be going through something similar, you can do it. I believe in you. If I can do it, you can too. The other side is brighter than you could ever imagine. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friend.